All right. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, today I'm talking to an old friend of mine that I used to work at Best Buy, actually, and he's just a great guy. Him and his wife have started and executed, and I wanted to interview him because he just mentioned that he was doing some search engine optimization on his website, but he's set out to make a difference, and that's one of the biggest things that I want to in- encourage anybody who sees this video that when it comes to something that you see in this world, whether it's a business you want to create, a nonprofit, or an impact that you want to make, take action for crying out loud. Go out and actually do that. And that's something that Matt and his wife have done. And I just wanted to uh, to tell his story. So we'll just jump right in. Matt, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Now, where, where are you at? Tell us what you're, what you're up to. What do you do for a living? And, and tell us about the Fletcher Foundation and uh, what's going on, man. Yeah, I've lived in Des Moines, Iowa for about five years now uh, with my wife, Haley. We have two uh, living kids, uh, Hudson. Uh, he is three. My daughter is about to turn one next month. So we are very busy uh, in that respect. Uh, approximately two years ago, uh, my wife was pregnant. We had a rough pregnancy, and we ended up losing our son, Fletcher, at 20 weeks. Uh, uh, you know, takes a couple of weeks, couple months to receive some hospital bills. I remember sitting at the table when the bills came in and the bill for that uh, delivery was more than our son prior to that. He was our, our second born, Fletcher was. Uh. And at that time we were fortunate, fortunate enough to pay that bill. Uh, we were in a good spot financially, paid the bill, uh, but it just doesn't feel good. Uh, I think a few days after that at work, uh, people, we're talking about how much it costs to have kids and it just kind of dawned on me that it really is such a bummer that you've got to pay for a kid that you weren't able to take home. Oh my gosh. So that's when the Fletcher foundation, that's when the Fletcher foundation was born. I remember talking to my wife prior to this, that I want to make his, uh, his life mean something. And we decided to start the Fletcher foundation, a nonprofit. Wow. That's, I'm just looking at a picture of you and your two, your two ones on your website here. Now, what's your wife's name again? Haley. Haley, absolutely. So you got a three and a one year old, and then you get all the anticipation of of being ready to to be with your little one, and then it doesn't happen, and then you get this. I suppose was that just something that pops out of the blue? You don't even think about that. Oh my gosh! Not only did we lose our child, but Oh man, now we're getting hosed in medical bills and, and, and where things like just what, what the heck was that like? I mean, what, how did that, did it all kind of happen at once? Was it something that hit you afterwards or like what, how did you process that? Yeah, we never, I don't know, thinking about it, you would think that, you, you know, doctor, they, enter something in the system each time they do something, they set it up to billing for the amount of, uh, based on the amount of work they do. And you would think there would be some kind of safety net at the hospital where they say, okay, this wasn't a good situation. Not even talking about stillbirth or miscarriage. Uh, Maybe someone uh, passes away or it is a miscarriage or stillbirth where the doctor would have the ability to say, okay, that 30 minutes I was in there, it, I'm going to waive my fee for that. Or the hospital would say, this happened. We're going to waive our uh, fees for the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and maybe some of that happened, but like I said, that bill was bigger than our son Hudson that we had, uh, which was a, a probably a more uh, intense delivery than it was with Fletcher. Uh, we didn't expect it. Uh, mm-hmm. We expected it to if it was going to happen to be a small, small bill for some, some little things here and there. Uh, but it definitely hurt. It definitely hurt paying $5,500 for a baby that we never got to leave that room with. Uh, yeah. And it's such a unique pain. I mean, and I just mean this gently and lovingly that, you know, unless you experience that or in that situation, that's something that you're just kind of oblivious to. Like, that's just something I haven't thought of, of, the extra pain there, but you set out. So you and your wife are like, let's go out and we want to make a, a, a difference in your, and, and, uh, were you contemplating doing like a for-profit thing or did you know right away, this is going to be a nonprofit? And then I'd love to hear what the nonprofit actually does. Like, what are you trying to do? Um, you know, what are the wins that you have? 
Yeah, we knew right away we wanted to do something uh, nonprofit. Uh, originally, <laughs> we thought it would be something that would be easy. Okay, we can create a small website, we can create a Facebook. This is a great cause. People will want to give us money. It'll be a piece of cake. And then our goal from the beginning was to pay people's hospital bills. Okay. So we were going to find families that have gone through stillbirth, stillbirth or miscarriage, apply through our website, we'd send them a check. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not that easy. Uh, it's, it's a lot more work than I ever expected it to be. Really? Started off trying to figure it out on my own through just different uh, Iowa websites. So each state kind of has a, has a resource, a business resource. Figure out what you got to do to be a nonprofit in Iowa. Had to send some articles of incorporation to the state. Had to register as a nonprofit. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing, so I used a website to kind of help me facilitate that. Paid them a small fee, sent them my information, and they uh, filed that for us. Yeah. Okay. But then I realized to register and get your 501c3 to actually be tax exempt because none of that did anything, which I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> You have to have a board of directors. Okay, where do I find board of directors that are passionate about this and have a, uh, a drive to them because they're not going to be getting paid to do this? Mm -hmm. That was one of the big hurdles. How do I develop a website that people want to go to that can organically get to it uh, that want to give us money to help people and then also get those people that want to apply for those funds that we have? Yep. How do I find... Uh, people privately to donate. Uh, so those are kind of some of the challenges that I started to run into and I realized this is a lot more work than I ever expected it to be. Yeah, it's interesting. I know from setting up the accounting practice that we had before, it's like a for-profit, you start out as the sole proprietor and then it's like, well, if you want to mitigate taxes, you become an S-corp and there's a bunch of hoops that you have to jump through, right? There's just all this screwing around you have to do. And there's no clear book. It's kind of like when you get it's almost like when you get a toy nowadays or you like I got round up to clean up my my grass. The list on the back yeah. not round up but whatever, mosquito spray. The the list on yeah. the back is so big. Like I couldn't read that whole thing. Like am I seriously going to sit down and read a five-page book to know what's going on? There's so many so much bureaucracy um to protect from cheating, but there's no quick like here's the summary. You're going to do these four things and even if you find that on the internet, it's difficult. So not only did you have yeah. to navigate this nonprofit bureaucracy, which nonprofits can exploit all sorts of, like there are crooked nonprofits that we need to protect against. Most people don't know that, but um, sure. so you had to go through that. Then you get this whole other bucket, um, and it'd be interesting when you just hand people money or pay for their bills. Was there a bunch of like, is this a taxable event? Is it like, did you have to jump through any of hoops like that, or is that not hasn't been relevant yet? Uh, that has not been a problem we've ran into yet. So we're still relatively small. Yeah. Uh, we've been in existence for about a year and a half. Uh, we have a uh, tax period from uh, July to June. So our first tax year is over. Mm -hmm. We're small enough where, so in the tax world, they have three different type of tax returns you can do for your federal. They've got a 990N, it's yeah. called. Yeah. Very basic. You just say the name, you check a box that you did less than 50000 and send send it in electronically. Yeah. So you got the all this bureaucracy. We don't need to get into the into each one. It's just a bunch of bureaucracy, right? Don't mean to interrupt. There. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. All right. So now um, you contacted me on Facebook, and uh, you were just asking little questions because you've been doing some homework and, and putting the – because what do you do for a full-time living? Like what, what's your full-time gig right now? I work in insurance. I adjust claims. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I work for an insurance company here in Des Moines. Uh, currently, I do claims on trailers, semis, dump trucks, uh, stuff like that. Absolutely. So I do that 40 hours a week, and then uh, I probably put around 10, 15 hours into the nonprofit uh, since I, I run that as well. Yep. Yep. Now, in your life, it, has it been you've got two small children? For you to actually put extra effort into something, right? Um, you know, what is it that keeps you fueled up and to have the margin mentally and energy, you know, to have your cup full enough to be able to pour into something extra? Like what what keeps you going? Like what's it been like? Have you? Because I always think it's interesting when I'm working on things that there's times where my cup is so full, it's like, oh my gosh, I just want to, 
I want to write. I want to create. I want to create videos. I want to make websites. I want to blog. I want to <laughs> go do sales calls, yeah. whatever it is. I want to engage. And then there's times where it's not like that, <laughs> right? Um, what's yeah, been the I, key for you to stay full, to be able to work on these extra things while you're a father of two young kids that poop their diapers and make trouble and, uh, <laughs> and yet you have a full-time job too. What's that been like? Yeah, I feel like there's kind of three seasons in uh, entrepreneurship, running a business. You could be burnt out, uh, you could be overwhelmed, and then you can kind of find a sweet spot in the middle, and it's hard to stay in the middle. Mm. I remember a time where, uh, you know, I felt like we have a good cause, why aren't people donating? And it's very discouraging to stay motivated. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I've been meeting with some different consultants, some different mentors uh, that have really got my brain thinking about all these different things so it's super exciting there's so much to do but there's not enough time in the day to do it yeah. uh, i feel like if it was my full-time job and i could do just this 40 hours it'd be a lot more tangible to do all these things mm -hmm. uh, but there there's no way uh it wouldn't be fair to my wife to say every single night after we put the kids to bed all right you go to bed uh and i'll talk to you in a few days because i have 14 things on my list to do for the fletcher <laughs> foundation yep yep no, it's an interesting thing when you're whether it's a nonprofit or you own your own business for profit. It doesn't really matter when you have your own endeavor that you're setting out to, to to be full enough to do it. And then I think you're doing it right. I think this whole you know spinning the plate on the side, uh, the side hustle while you're working full time can be so great. And obviously, this is a bigger issue than just your income. You know, it's not like you're trying to set up something where people are going to donate to your income. You want to commit to this right. because you can impact people's lives. You can help families. You can add win into their sales at a time that it's just devastating. Like even no matter what, birth is just a huge event. No matter what, everything connected with that is meaningful. And then to have um, loss, loss is also so deep and meaningful for you to be able to add value into that situation is just critical. So I do want to dive in um, in in an effort to. I think we could probably talk forever about this. A um, couple quick notes. I know you're good at this. Anybody that's listening, Matt was, um, him and I worked at Best Buy together. And I don't care what anyone says about work in retail. Sure, it may not be glamorous, but you get so many reps at, at serving people, problem solving situations that may not be the most complex, but they're not the easiest either. And Matt always, he worked with our customer service and a couple different more in-depth roles, and he always had a keen eye on serving people, on leaving them feeling like, oh my gosh, I got taken care of in just such a great way. And uh, and I, I'm older. I'm 37. I don't, how old are you, Matt? 28. 28. All right. So I'm like 10 years older than you. So you were a pup when I was around. <laughs> and uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's been cool to hear how you've morphed in. And I bet you're so good at your full-time gig and this side-time gig. But, um, you know, I just want to jump in. We, I want to give you some practical stuff that I see out there. And, you know, as for your website, for your organization, um, and, and just some tips on, on what might work really well. But I think it's interesting that you were talking about, um, I mean, do you have, so do you have your mission, your purpose and your, like your, your critical wins, like what, what you need to be focusing on? Like, just tell me what, what you want to solve in the next kind of five to, you know, in the next year here, um, I'd imagine finding donors and, and making that clear and a doable path, um, is important. I imagine being able to be found whether it's online or whatever, just awareness. I always think marketing comes down to two things. You make people aware of yourself. And then the second thing is, is those that are aware of you, you help them um, just be convinced that this is worth it, right? So that they have this idea that this organization is worth it. And I know that might be cheapening it, but those two things, like, hey, if people become aware of it, and then if they see us, then they think this is worth giving to or worth buying or whatever that is. What things are you trying to accomplish um, if you had like one to four bucket items in the next year here? What, what are you working on mainly? Uh, I like to look at it, three main things that are a big focus for the next year. Uh, the first is specific to non-grant or specific to nonprofits. Uh, that's finding grants, corporate grants, uh, getting that money that they want to give away. Uh, so that's a challenge in itself to get that. The next thing is getting people to our website 
and there's kind of an A and B to that, get people to our website to give us money and then apply. Uh, so a lot of that has to do with our SEO struggles, having our mission clearly stated on our landing page. So when they get there, do they know what's going on or are they just leaving right away? Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, how, do we, how do we convert them? So if we are getting them to our page, we have good SEO, uh, they're finding us with, with relevant keywords, how are we then directing them to take action on that? So grants, get them to our website, optimize that landing page, have them take an action. Those are probably the three, three biggest buckets that we need to get figured out to keep growing. Okay, absolutely. Now, what role does your wife play in the organization? And, uh, you know, what are your strengths and how you've been, what, what do you handle? What does she handle? And if you were to kind of say what our 80-20 principle is, is that I'm going to carry these rocks, she's going to carry these rocks and your board of directions or whoever, uh, board of directors or whoever else that's involved, who's doing what just mainly? Uh, my wife does everything to do with uh, reaching out to uh, people that apply. So she'll manage those relationships. Uh, if we have additional questions, she'll navigate that. My wife is softer than I am with talking to people. Uh, that's kind of her gift. So she does all of that. My wife also does a great job of reaching out to local organizations that can be a resource for us to send people to if they apply, have questions, want additional information. Uh, my wife does that stuff. Our board, uh, so in a nonprofit, kind of high level, real brief, the board is kind of the govern governance of the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We have the board. Uh, there's me, two other people on that. But then within that, I'm the president. Uh, we have to have a treasurer, and then we have to have a secretary. Yep. Uh, so my secretary is really good at uh, communication, uh, making sure everyone on the team is on the same page, and then my treasury does all things accounting. If we buy something or expense something, we send the receipt. He keeps track of all that. Absolutely. As okay. far as myself, I definitely have the biggest plate. I do the website. There's very little amount I know of SEO. I do all that. I kind of lead the fundraising, reaching out to different consultants, uh, growth plans. I, I do a lot. I wear a lot of hats. Absolutely. Okay. Well, so I just want to cast vision for this. Now, anybody that's watching this, um, you know, I, I'm going to, it's always easy as a consultant to come in and be like, hey, you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And, uh, you know, if I list off 20 things, that's not going to be helpful. But the idea is, is what are the main primary things that are going to help you accomplish your goal? And, uh, I think you've got whittled down that whole idea of getting grants, um, get your website so that people can give and they can apply. And then how do you convert them or, or how do you actually make something happen when somebody's there is super helpful. Um, is there anybody doing this really well in terms of, of helping folks? And what's the term? Do you say people that are, are kind of wrestling through loss um, with a stillborn or what? I don't want to be insensitive to the terminology there. Is there a certain yeah, so still in the United States, a stillborn is going to be considered a baby that's born uh, 20 weeks or later without a heartbeat. Okay. Uh, I'm not the technical expert. I don't know if they have to be born yeah. without a heartbeat or pass within a certain amount of time, but that's generally what a stillborn is going to be. Okay. So my uh, intent is just to be gentle and to, and to be – folks, if you're in this situation, um, we, we're we with you and um, – I just, I pray and hope that God will work and, and move you upward and forwards in all things. So, um, now is there any organization that you feel like is really a hub? Um, cause my initial thing, most people don't understand this when it comes to the internet, there's kind of two things that happen. One, you have, um, two types of marketing, I think, right? Either one, you grab your phone and you search something or you shout out at Siri or you shout out at, at, uh, Alexa and you're like, Hey, <laughs> Siri, show me best um, YouTubers up with um, loss or infertility, right? Someone might ask something like that. You might search um, best books about, you know, dealing with, with a loss of a child. You might do something like that. You might jump on it. And then the other side is, is you might jump into Instagram. You might jump into social media and, and find kind of your, your clan there or your group that is dedicated to that. So I'd, I'd imagine there's, 
there's people that are helping encourage others. But I guess the bottom line is, I think on one side, you have this inbound behavior from the person. You're, you're going through some sort of loss and you want to find solutions. You've got questions and you want to find some hope. You want to find some some answers to questions. And then the other side is, is um, <laughs> you're sitting there dealing with loss and you're mindlessly scrolling through Instagram or you're looking at Facebook or maybe you're watching YouTube videos or maybe you're on LinkedIn looking for a new job or whatever that looks like. And those people are there and then you can have some sort of thing pop in front of them, right? And I, I just call that disruptive media. Those are the two areas that I sit in. Disruptive media can be print, it can be billboards, it can be all sorts of different stuff. But the bottom line, I think, that it comes down to is you either sitting there looking at something and something pops up or you go seeking a solution to something um, and you will find that. And usually it's through Google. Um, if you're a... <laughs> If you don't do any setup on a Windows PC, it's through Bing. And that's about it for Bing. You watch though. I'm telling you, Bing's going to make a comeback as Google plays more shenanigans. Bing's going to be duck, duck, go. That's another one. I'm telling you, man, people got to people gotta be ready for that. Um, if you were a business, I would say that Google My Business is another thing. You search for a concrete company near you, it's going to pop up. But um, So that's the first two types, right? So we got to have this idea of what are the queries or what are the problems that people are going to have? I think there's really three stages. I'm just going to pull up on the screen here because um, HubSpot does a really good job of showing. It's called the buyer's journey. And you probably already know this. So I don't want to talk like I know this and you don't. I, I mean this humbly. This isn't rocket science. This isn't like, oh my gosh, Rob's got it all figured out here. But essentially, I think that there's these three stages. People become aware of you or their problem. They become aware of their problem. They go into consideration mode and then they go into this decision making mode, right? So the idea is it's much easier in retail or in a like services. Hey, my leak is roofing. You start questioning, you know, you jump on and how to, how to identify a leaking roof. What do I do if my roof is leaking? 10 things you should do during a snowstorm. Ice is building up on my roof, right? You start having these long tail questions and long tail just means long tail keywords, right? I'm asking these questions about the problems that I have. And I might bump into your blog then. I might bump into some sort of solution on Google. And then I'm like, well, I'm going into the mode where I'm going to have to find a solution to my leaking roof, right? Um, do I go up there and chip the ice? Do I need a new roof in the summer? What do I need to do? And while you're in consideration mode, that you're trying to find out how to be a, a good decision maker is really what it is. And then when it becomes the decision mode, it's, hey, you've, you've decided somebody's going to be worth it. You're going to decide that they're worth it and they're worthy of trust. And boy, this is a great place to put my money in order to solve my problem, right? Well, you have a variation of that. And I think that you have two groups of people that you talked about, right? You have the donor. And I think that's one group um, and, and a whole other set of impact that we have to talk about. And it's really tied to, we'll get into it. But I think from my training at Eagle Brook Church, I, I worked a couple years at Eagle Brook Church and it's like the fourth biggest church in the United States. It was like the 10th when I was there. But when you listen to what do people give to, people give when they know that this is making a difference, that they know they can trust the organization and that they're, they're going to feel like this is, and they're called to it, right? And uh, I think we can get into that. But my hope here would be, you know, what are the things to just start creating more heat? How do we get this fire burning in your digital presence so that it kind of grows into this roaring flame that can ignite vision for donors that can serve as a resource to people. So I just blabbed for a long time. I've been drinking coffee. What thoughts or ideas or yeah, buts or what pops into your head as I say all that? Yeah, I think you started to hit on it at the end there as you talked about uh, traction. I feel like that's important to you know, have, have that mission, know what it is, and then have a plan of where you want to go and a plan to get there. Uh, if you aren't getting any traction, you may need to adapt. You may need to change. Uh, if you've got an e-commerce site and you're trying to sell, I don't know, uh, lawn equipment and nobody's coming to your site, why? How are you adapting? How are you changing to become more marketable to what you're trying to do? Uh, yep. you hit it right on the head. We definitely have two different groups that we're, we want. We want people that have money and then people that want to apply 
And a lot of it is that credibility. Do they trust us? Do they trust us with their money to fulfill our mission? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to get that trust. It's, it's not easy. Yep. So um, and just in, in the heart of I just want to make the biggest difference possible, I apologize if I sound like a know-it-all. I apologize <laughs> ahead of time. I'm like a super older brother. Um, I'm just going to kind of blast through a couple of things here that I think I'm noticing. My first advice is I think that if you just become a hub of resource to and you help equip people with your website, I think you're going you're gonna to start seeing tons of momentum. Um, have you had any wins with that before I even dive in here? Like, do you feel like you're starting to get like some of the resources that you've shared or shown or, or advice that you've given? Have you, have you felt like you've had any big wins or has it still been it's so new that it's not nothing's really hitting hard? Yeah, definitely so new. Uh, our resource page uh, is better than it was uh, with my little knowledge that I have on website design. I redesigned it, uh, made it more mobile friendly. That was a big problem we were having. Yep. It's better than it was, but we definitely need more resources, uh, some local resources, national resources, uh, resources for moms, resources for dads, resources for grandparents. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there and our, our list is very small. Uh, so it is an opportunity for us. Cool. So I'll just jump to it. I think that what you need to be thinking about are what are the search terms that people are going to be um, asking. And I think you need to create written content and YouTube content. The two biggest, most powerful tools that you have is when you just think about what are people going to search when they're going through this, right? So I can just think of like um, best. So you think about it. It's best books, best podcasts, best resources, I don't know if people will ask resources. They're probably going to ask for like best advice. But if you just jump into, so the idea is if you find this this more niched um, keyword that you can go after. When I say keyword, it's just it's a query, right? So let me give you an example real quick. I latched onto um, when I was building our accounting firm. I said the tax difference between an LLC and an S corp. Okay, I found myself leading every single sales meeting I ever had with the same conversation. Hey, if you do proactive tax planning, you're gonna become an S-Corp and we're gonna save you a ton of money. And what I did was I set out and I created this YouTube video that is about, it's eight minutes and 38 seconds long. I just searched on YouTube, just so you know, or on Google. I searched Google and I searched tax difference between LLC and S-Corp. My video has 400,000 views on it. Um, It makes me money. (laughs) And so does this topic just in general. I actually make, ad rev off of YouTube. But basically, I found that's a niche, right? So people really needed a clear explanation of what the tax difference is. And then there's about four other videos that I had to create, like, what are the three drawbacks of becoming an S-Corp? And then I said, when not to become an S-Corp? And I've made probably 12 videos about S-Corps, and they just rank for these keys, keywords. In fact, as I search on Google, I'm on the front page of Google. I'm the first three video, or the first of the three videos that show up in the search results, I have two of them. If you scroll over more, I know that I'm in there. There's a fourth one. There's a fifth one. So I'm in there five out of eight videos, I think. Um, ironically, a year and a half ago, before there was this big Google algorithm update where basically if you talk about money or if you talk about people's medical stuff, um, it used to be a little bit easier to rank if you weren't in that space. Well, I used to rank, I think it was on page two or one on the tax difference at LLC and then the algorithm update and it nuked it. So what I'm getting at is, is what I, here's my video again in YouTube. I'm on page two and I'm, I'm on page three. There's my actual website. Um, and I'm just a rinky dink. I've only been building this website out for about three years and here I am above Walter's Kluwer. Um, above Inc.com, above LLC University, Corporate Direct, Money. Like, I outrank CNN in this thing, okay? And the reason why is because it's an actual good explanation of what's going on. And so what I'm getting at is, is if you start to think about I, I would sit down with a Word doc, and you and your wife should just be like, let's put, my, put ourselves in the mind of somebody who's going through this, just went through this, or knows somebody, right? And just go... What are the questions they're going to be asking? What might they jump into Google and actually want to know? Um, and one of the easy things you can do, Matt, is you just go to Google and, and you know, the autocomplete function that's on there. If you just like best books about um, 
still birth. So I can see right now best book still birth, be best books on still stillness, best book on still photography. Well, that's not it. Um, but if I continue to type, what you'll see is as you type, it doesn't mean there's a lot of searches for that necessarily because now you want to find the volume because the whole idea here is you want to find keywords that are relevant to you that people are actually searching that you can create. And so one super easy thing you could do is you start making lists, right? If you were to just create a list of here are the five best books and a little paragraph about the, you know, the five best books after stillbirth grief handling grief, handling losing a child, you just start doing the work about what, what's the question they're going to ask. And then you create a well, a good, you know, and this is weird. It should be between 500 and 1500 words. Like it, it should be meaty. Like it's, it's like a, a meaty spaghetti sauce. Um, the <laughs> idea is, is it's, it's well documented. It's researched. You're linking to those sources. Cause as Google crawls this thing, it's going to be like, is he making this up or is this legit? And as you write that resource, I'm telling you, man, you write that blog on a nice niche keyword so that it's not something that everybody's writing about. You will rank. And <clears throat> there's two sides to that is one, you're going to help that. Per or there's probably three things. One, you're going to, you're going to actually give them good resources. I think churches and nonprofits in general miss this because people have questions about how do you find the right counselor, right? You could even, if, if there's some locality to what you're doing right now, if you want to hunker down and have some wins in Iowa, you could go out and find some of the, the counselors or grief counselors that help with this. And then you could write the best, Iowa's best grief counselors for families grieving with stillbirth or something like that, right? Now, one, it can be found on Google, but two, if you share that on social media, that can catch fire, right? That's something that if it's a genuine, and it could be like, if it's a book, it could be, here's the three things people learn from this book, and here's a link to it on Amazon, here's a link to it here, here's the author speaking on YouTube, and you have the YouTube page, or YouTube video embedded on the, on the page. The idea is that your page becomes this authoritative um, kind of expert driven, super helpful resource around whatever that query is. Thoughts, questions, reactions? Yeah, that's super uh, applicable. Something that I can uh, take away, go back and start working on right away. Uh, I think I mentioned in this, this call, I, uh, SEO is something I knew nothing about until I started this and it's hard, it's hard to rank. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the complexity is not knowing where to start. Yep. Uh, so that's, that's good. Thank you. That's all I would do is, so people, what's really cool, there's, there's a good and a bad to this when it comes to SEO in 2019. It's almost 2020, right? The good news is, is Google knows that what it wants to serve up to its, its search query people. Like you, you're like, when you search on Google, you're like a daughter, right? It's like my daughter and Google's the, the parent. And it's like, I, when my good, I don't want just anyone getting connected to my daughter. I want a trustworthy, authoritative, like good solution or boy for my daughter, right? I want to have a good connection. So basically there's this EAT, it's expertise, authority, and trustworthiness factor that needs to be, to happen there. Well, how do you prove that you're trustworthy? You mentioned backlinks yesterday. Um, you know, the idea is, is if you, you need to set up your, your web footprint, right? Um, so here'd be the next thing is we want to work on the trustworthiness. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you open up a website that has the proper title, like get your name, your address and your phone number and kind of the logistical information about your organization and put that on your website, put it in the footer of your website, create a Google, my business account, even if it's a nonprofit Open that up and make sure that the name, the address, and the phone number are consistent. Have you been on Google My Business yet? I have not, no. Okay. I believe it's good for nonprofits. I may be talking, well, no, I see it for everything. Um, nonprofits, Google My Business, Google My Business for nonprofits. I don't know if it's non-management resources. So I just Googled or searched Google My Business for nonprofits, and there's a nonprofit management resource here. Um, 
I think, see, every church is on there. I know you should do this. Um, so that's the first thing is what you want to do is you open up your website, you put that on there. And the idea is you want to prove that like you're a legit place. Now, my assumption is you're working out of your office, right? Your home office. Yeah. Yeah. Just use your home. Use your home. Don't be afraid of that. Um, I would say you got to kind of swallow the pill and be like, all right, well, I'm going to put my address out there a little bit. But what you should do is you want to you want to open up these citations is what we call them. And we just want to send signals across the trillion of websites that you're like a consistent, like you're there, <laughs> right? Um, so the first one I would open up is make sure that your Facebook page is, um, oh, what do you call it? verified you go through a verification process make sure your address and information is there i'd say put your address and information on your home just embrace the fact that you're at a, a home office it's 2019 everybody's at a home office um do the same thing for instagram create a linkedin page create a youtube page so create all those social media pages if you haven't already and just make sure that you fill out the about us and the about us is showing some consistent language about you know what are the three things that you do where are you located? What are you doing? Um, and then I would open up a Bing Places. So Bing Places, you'll want to search that. Bing Places will give you um, another, like it's a legit thing. Um, and the idea is you're going to prove that you're actually there. They're going to send you a postcard. Same thing with Google My Business. So Google My Business, Bing Places. You can do Yahoo, but there's this cockamamie like they're all tied into this service that you have to pay for but um the last one i would do is apple maps so i think those are probably the only citations you need to really worry about and the, the principle here matt is it's called name address phone number consistency we just need to establish you know you could go to yellowpages.com um, i would encourage you to maybe consider paying for a chamber membership somewhere um, however you want to do it those are easy backlinks they're not like high quality backlinks, but they're just citations that establish you across the trillions of websites that are out there that, oh, the Fletcher Foundation is this. Um, and use that. I saw in your meta title that you put uh, resources. So it was the Fletcher Foundation. Um, uh, here's another little tip. I don't, I, what, are you using Squarespace for this or what, what tool are you using to build this? Is it Wix? Uh, Word. Press with uh, Elementor plugin for building. Okay. Um, one thing you'll want to do is install a a thing called, uh, oh, what's it called? The SEO. Do you have the SEO plugin? Uh, are you talking about Yoast? Yeah, Yoast. There we go. I was like, it's not yeah. Yaxt. It's not Yellow. Yoast. <laughs> there we go. Put, put Yoast in there. And then make sure for every page that you create, I, can, I already see a couple of them here. It's not a huge deal, but you have a couple that don't have the uh, meta description filled up. So make sure you do the meta title and meta description. There's only one or two. You got most of it right. Um, but make sure that that's filled out. And then, so the main thing is, I would just start creating content. So back to like, so there's these basic technical things, but the good news is, is Google's like, I just want a trustworthy source. And if you kind of show you're trustworthy by getting citations, that's good. And then you got to just create solutions to queries and people will find you. Now, the challenge is you want to find something that's niche enough that you're not throwing down against CNN. You know what I mean? If you just create like, here's the 10 things Trump did bad, you're never going to rank, right? But if you talk about the best books to listen to on Amazon Kindle or on, on Audible when you're dealing with grief from a, a stillborn or, or infertility, you'll probably be able to rank, right? But then you also, things can be so niche that nobody really searches for it. So there's this weird thing where... Um, you can do some stuff there. Now, the second thing that I would I would talk about is YouTube. Um, I think YouTube can be a great place. I've personally, my business and a couple other businesses have really benefited from it. But you have to, you, you just got to create, right? So anytime you create video, you create it on YouTube, you push it out to LinkedIn, you push it out to um, Facebook and Instagram, you push it out to everything and people consume video differently. But the the interesting thing here is, if you were to write a blog post, you could take that blog post and you could actually script it and then grab your phone and use your phone as a voice recorder and just record your voice reading what you wrote. Hey, everybody, today we're going to be talking about the five best books that we found. And, you know, you try and make it probably short and sweet, but um, 
you could actually read out your blog post and then you just throw it into, I don't know, do you use Windows or Mac computers? I've got a Mac. I mean, so you throw it in iMovie, right? Or if you have Final Cut Pro, whatever you want. And you just put some like B-roll images. You don't have to have your face on there. But if you just create resources that people might watch on YouTube, it's amazing what people will watch on YouTube. But that's another great inbound source. So I would I would do that and work on that because that's like a whole other marketing world. So I would I think to me, everything that I see here right now, those are going to be your most important um, things that you do. So I would uh, make sure you have Yoast, fill out your meta description, meta titles, and then just start writing really good resources around queries as blog posts. And I think if you just start there, Matt, I think you're going to have tons of success. I, I really mean it because that's what I think you're going to have success. So what questions or thoughts might you have? I'm, you know, I kind of just picked one topic here and went, but what would any questions or things or ideas that you might have? You organically answered a lot of the questions I had going into this conversation. You know, we talked about uh, backlinks, where to get started there. Uh, it's really good hearing about trying to find these different ways and easy ways to get other websites pointing to you, uh, verifying your legitimacy. Uh, talked about SEO, the meta descriptions, meta tags, uh, yep. the content need. Real quick, so something popped in my head. I, don't, I just want to interrupt real yeah. quick. So you talked about the trust thing. Here, here, so people will give to things that they know are helping, right? And I think you know this, but any success you've had so far, anything, if you've helped a friend by showing them the best speech you've ever heard, right? I think about like what, and I don't know, you, you should probably unbox what is actually helpful. You know, what is helpful as a resource? Is it a book? Or is it more of like, do you have some, some speeches? Do you have a psychologist? Do you have, what is it that you need? Do you need a group? Maybe, maybe the solutions are more local. I don't know. You'll, you guys will become experts in this. You are the experts in it. But as you discover what is it that's really helpful, I think the second stage is, is you have to show what you've done. So people will give when they trust you, but they'll also give when they see that there's momentum built. And you get rid of some of the yeah buts, right? So what I'm saying here is that in WordPress, if you were to create a category on your blog post so that you could um, have a menu item up at the top that it says stories, right? And in that story, all you got to do is grab your iPhone and, and interview someone about, tell us your story. Um, and it could be a story about how the Fletcher Foundation helped them, which is pretty red meat, like you're asking for a referral, right? Or it could be that you just start, you know, it's kind of what I'm doing here. I just want to share stories of people who are trying to take action to solve problems or create businesses. That's, I want to share your story. I want to help you, right? So if you can find a way that you can capture that content of how do you guys go through things, it could be telling your wife's story, you know, um, it could be capturing your story on video, but showing on your website, I think testimonials video where people can see the faces you can look into the eyes when you tell the story you can hear their voice you can hear that this is meaningful you can you can feel the pain that they were in you can hear the surprise um, so you doing DIY and this is the challenge in a nonprofit right you're scratching two sticks together to try and make a flame and it's hard right it's just hard you don't have profits <laughs> In a business, I always look at it as an ROI, right? One of the best ROIs you might have, Matt, is to maybe connect with some of the video professionals at the churches around you. That would be a piece of advice. Um, find, find a hungry, starving filmmaker out of film school around there or out of the creative programs. There's got to be a, a school somewhere, right? I, I always laugh when you go into Best Buy. <laughs> go to the Best Buy that has the nice cameras in your area and find the kid. The kid's there. She might be wh whoever. And find the guy who, or the gal who makes videos, right? And just ask him, I need your help. Will you help me capture our story? You have to capture and show the stories of what are going on. You got to show your impact. But you also have to temper that with a humility and a caution against self-promotion, right? So there's this weird balance. And you can only go to the well with people a couple times. So what I've seen work really well is do your work, make an impact, 
replicate that on your website. So whatever is helpful, you know, whatever questions people actually have, create blog posts that are equipping that, in person help them, and then share the stories of the pain that people are going through. Share the stories of the hope that has been found, even outside of you. Like, don't be afraid. Don't feel like it's got to be a Fletcher Foundation story. It could just be, we want to share the hope that's there. All Maybe what it is, is you just find people that want to encourage other people. You know what I mean? It, you could just be an aggregator. You find them on Instagram. So this happens all the time. Go find people in this, what is the word? Clan, right? There's people in this group. Go find them on Instagram, find them in LinkedIn, find them in the nonprofit world on Facebook, find a compelling story and just say, hey, all we're trying to do is we want to show 10 hopeful messages to people and we want to, we want to feature them. Would you be able to do something like what we're doing right now, right? Um, and, and capture that. because So to be trustworthy, I think that's the next set as you show the impact you make or if you just encourage people with your digital asset, your website, I think it's going to be much better 